वेलकम टू सावरकर आई ए एस स्टडी सर्कल कंडक्टेड बाय स्वतंत्रवीर सावरकर राष्ट्रीय स्मारक दादर मुंबई हियर इन दिस सीरीज ऑफ क्वेश्चंस वी आर अप्रोचिंग टुवर्ड्स द रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ यूपीएससी सिविल सर्विसेस एग्जामिनेशन एंड हाउ टू प्रिपेयर एंड हू कैन प्रिपेयर फॉर दिस एग्जाम all these questions we are going to answer in this series uh, that is we are conducting like question series so obviously the first question that what is the age criteria for upsc civil services examination age criteria for upsc civil services examination is very very clear uh, minimum age that is 21 years completed okay but uh, what is the date simple if you are approaching for upsc civil services examination of 2024 then on the 1st august 24 your minimum age must be 21 year completed all right so this is the criteria of age that is lower category uh, lower uh, age limit that is uh, minimum age limit now maximum age limit is 32 years so from the time span of 21 years to 32 years we can appear for this examination again when we have to consider 32 again the answer is that suppose you are approaching uh, you are appearing for upsc civil services examination 2024 then on the 1st august 2024 your age should not exceed 32 years that means on 31st july uh, sorry on 1st uh, august we should not exceed age 32 now this upper age limit is there for open category candidate now for reservations the age relaxations are there so uh, if you belong belong to obc category then age limit is somewhat relaxed you can appear till 35 years for this examination but keep in mind only obc certificate is not sufficient apart from that you must provide a non creamy layer certificate then only your category is considered as obc otherwise your category will be considered as open and age limit will be 32 so please keep in mind that you require fresh non creamy layer certificate that means the year in which you are going to appear at that time you must have non creamy layer certificate then only you should be uh, you have to consider yourself as obc category otherwise open so for obc category age relaxation is there by 3 years and for sc and st category uh, again that caste certificate that must be validated and all that but after that Uh, age relaxation is there still two more years that is still age of 37 years you can appear for upsc civil services examinations so these are the age criteria i am revising again the minimum age criteria is 21 years for each and everybody but uh, upper limit is actually 32 years but uh, special provision is there for obc that uh, if you have non criminal certificate plus obc certificate then you can uh, appear for this examination till age of 35 and if you belong to sc or st category then uh, you can appear uh, two more years that means till age of 37 you can appear what is the educational qualification required for upsc civil services examination now here uh it is advisable that you must have graduate degree from ugc recognized university that's the important condition i'm revising uh it student must be graduate from ugc recognized university that is the essential condition but if you are appearing for graduation examination and you are fitting in age criteria then you are eligible for appearing this examination so 
सेकंड इम्पॉर्टंट थिंग ग्रेजुएशन इज द मस्ट मेनी स्टूडेंट्स आर आस्किंग मी दैट ओके राइट नाउ आई एम इन ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड सो कैन आई हैपियर आंसर इज दैट नो यू हैव टू गेट एज क्राइटेरिया एज वेल एज एजुकेशनल क्वालिफिकेशन सो इफ बोथ आर मैचिंग देन ओनली यू कैन एपियर सो आई एम रिवाइजिंग अगेन द मिनिमम ग्रेजुएशन इज रिक्वायर्ड इफ यू आर पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट देन ऑल्सो ऑल राइट बट मिनिमम ग्रेजुएशन इज द क्वालिफिकेशन फॉर यूपीएससी सिविल सर्विसेस एक्जामिनेशन एंड यू हैव टू इफ यू आर एपियरिंग फॉर दैट एग्जाम देन ऑल्सो ऑल राइट बट यू मस्ट बी देर इन द एज क्राइटेरिया because just imagine uh, fortunately by am using word you will get after word but fortunately if you are able to qualify in the prelim then uh, you have to submit documents and therefore it is essential that uh, suppose uh, examinations usually they are there in month of may so you can appear simultaneously both examination upsc civil services because it is always there on the sunday so you can appear and then uh, graduation examination also but if you are getting selected for preliminary examination to mains then you have to provide documents so these documents will be there with you uh, if you are able to pass graduation examination so these are the important criteria what is the pattern of upsc civil services examination now uh, the pattern uh, is a uh, right now that means in 2023 the pattern is as follows number 1 you have to appear for first preliminary examination this is considered as filter examination so you have to first appear for preliminary examination second if you are able to qualify i'm not saying or i'm not using the word as you are passed out okay because this is a competitive examination there is no question of passing and failure so if you are able to qualify then you will get selected for mains examination that is the second stage now if you are able to qualify from mains then uh, there is a personality test many time we are calling this as interview but the correct word here is the personality test and then you have to go through this personality test and then you are qualified you are eligible for the same hill services so these are the stages i am revising number 1 preliminary examination number 2 mains examination and number 3 that is personality test or interview so these are the stages in upsc civil services examination what is the nature of upsc civil services preliminary examination now here we have to discuss quite long so first part i am going to discuss now uh, paper is divided into two parts paper 1 and paper 2 paper 1 is there to check your knowledge and how you are able to apply that knowledge that is also another criteria knowledge must be there and application mind must be there so how you are able to apply that knowledge that is also important thing that is paper 1 it is consisting of 100 questions with two marks each that means total marks 200 so this paper preliminary examination paper 1 is there for general studies which consisting of 2 uh, 100 questions two marks each that means total 200 marks where time given is Two hours. In other words, you have to solve hundred questions in one twenty minutes. So nearly with speed of one question per minute, and twenty minutes are there for tolerance, uh, check out, and all that. So this is the important thing that you have to solve hundred questions in one twenty minutes. That is paper one. Paper two. That is. Uh, Wrongly called as CSAT paper, it is actually aptitude test uh, for civil services. But initially, the term this for entire paper one as well as paper two. So now I am talking about paper two. Paper two is your application mind, your intelligence, uh, logical reasoning, analytical reasoning, etc. That is tested in paper two. Paper two 
is having 80 marks, uh, sorry, 80 questions, but marks are 200. So in 120 minutes, you have to solve 80 questions. That is of paper 2. Whereas for paper 1 as well as paper 2, one third negative marking is there, that is called as 0.33 negative marking. That means what? If three questions are wrong, then you will lose all three questions mark plus from your whatever the score question, uh, marks of one question will get deducted now in case of paper one two marks for each question so if your three answers are wrong then obvious thing is that uh, suppose your score is 50 from that they will uh, deduct two marks because one question carry two marks so they will deduct your two marks from first uh, that uh, your whatever the total but in case of paper 2 each question carries 2.5 marks and therefore for loss of 3 questions you are going to lose 2.5 marks so that is the uh, marking scheme for paper 1 as well as paper 2 now here paper 1 and paper 2 both were essential when they were introduced that means in 2011 exam but in latter phase, uh, they decided because students demanded and ultimately it's democracy. So whatever the government, they decided to change some pattern and ultimately instructions are given. That is, in case of paper 2, paper 2 will be considered as only for qualifying marks. That means you have to get minimum 66 marks out of 200. I'm revising. Paper 2 will be considered as only for qualifying. That means you have to score 66 marks out of 200. That's all. Then only your paper 1 we are going to check. And in case of paper 1, whatever your score, that should be considered as competitive exam score. So uh, it is not that paper 1 and paper 2 total they are considering for examination as previous in 2011, 12, 13. This uh, scheme was there that David, uh, your score was there out of 400 mark but now your score is of only out of 200 mark that means for paper 1 but uh, for that purpose your paper 2 marks must be minimum 66 so this is important criteria so this is about preliminary examination which subjects we have to study for preliminary examination as we have discussed earlier in our earlier question only that uh, paper 1 and paper 2 like that two papers are there and uh, both are of different type so first uh, let me clarify about paper 1 totally paper 1 is consisting of uh, say approximately we have to say 10 subjects I am revising total 10 subjects because the name of paper is general studies so it is general, but still we are categorizing under 10 paper, uh, 10 subjects. Uh, first one is history. Second, national freedom struggle. Actually in school days we used to learn as history only, but now here we have to consider this is second paper, that is national freedom struggle. Then geography. Uh, in geography we have to study both, world geography as well as Indian geography. And uh, Space science is also yet considered in geography only. So, history, national freedom struggle, geography, Indian polity, economics, then physics, chemistry, biology. Then, we have to study the most important sub subject that is environmental science. So, let us revise history. National freedom struggle, geography, political science that is Indian polity, economics, physics, chemistry, biology, environmental science. Total nine subjects. And after studying all these nine, the tenth one that is called as current affairs. So all these ten subjects totally we have to study in case of UPSC civil services preliminary examination but uh, the subjects need not be separate say for example a current affair question is maybe possible from science maybe possible current affair question is having connection with geography 
and like that things are also clubbed out together. The main thing is that your application mind that is tested in paper 1 along with what database you have. So both things we have to consider. So these are the subjects for preliminary examination. But keep in mind that every year when uh, advertisement, they are going to publish advertisement about this examination, then they are mentioned in the syllabus. So this is just basic idea I am giving. But uh, suppose you are appearing for 2024, then when uh, advertise will be there, notice will be there, where will you get this notice? Uh, keep in mind the web website name that is UPSC because you are appearing for UPSC so UPSC.gov it is government exam dot gov government of India therefore dot in so keep in mind UPSC.gov dot in on this website they publish the notice even uh, in employment news we will get that notice in detail where you will get the syllabus minor here and there may be there but generally we are saying the fixed uh, uh, module that is of these all subjects that is for paper 1. Now in case of paper 2 uh, your application mind is tested predominantly. So first thing you are grasping they are going to check for that purpose passages the comprehension type questions are there so passages are there and you have to answer questions based on that passage so uh, it is essential that strictly your answer should be there from passage only. Second, uh, that is language proficiency is also tested because uh, we got freedom in 1947. But next question is there, do we really got freedom in 1947? Because I am wearing clothes like Britishers. I am speaking, communicating with you in English. And uh, really, what is the meaning of freedom? We are not yet aware because yet English is considered as an official language in India. Uh, for detail, we are going to discuss in Indian polity why this is there. But uh, unfortunate that uh, we are celebrating Independence Day on 15th August 1947. Alright, I am not communicating with you in Indian language. I am communicating with you in some foreign language that is mother tongue of British people, most probably from UK. The people uh, belong to this uh, language and then rest of the world. Anyway, so English proficiency is tested there. Uh, then uh, that means actually what happened in India, two languages we are considering as uh, official languages. That is English and Hindi. So our paper is printed on one side in English and on second side in Hindi. But when I want to check English proficiency, the passage will be there, but English uh, passage will be there, but Hindi translation will not be there. Alright, and therefore uh, we are calling this for testing out your English proficiency. Then uh, the most important part, logical reasoning, analytical reasoning. Then data interpretation, because you are supposed to work as an officer. And therefore uh, data interpretation is really essential part of uh, this uh, officer's job. So it is there. Then the obvious thing is that simple arithmetics so it is something kind cruelty like that example simple arithmetics but it is there then one of the important thing is there that is uh, communication skills verbal communication and non-verbal communication decision making and problem solving say for officer officer is actually a category of leader only and so that officer must have this type of skill that is decision making and problem solving. So all these questions they are there in paper 2. So really paper 2 was a fantastic paper. It was actually essential. It is actually essential uh, not was. It is actually essential for an officer. But uh, democratically uh, we say that all right uh, quality fine marks are also there. So 66 marks if you are going to get, then also you are getting qualified in paper 2. So uh, these are the things uh, for uh, civil services examination prelim, what we have to study. How to study for UPSC civil services examination. Uh, now this question uh, we have to discuss with reference to 
three parts of this uh, examination that is preliminary examination, mains examination and personality test. So first part that is preliminary examination which is only objective in nature. My first advice will be there for you, those who are preparing for UPSC Civil Services examination, they must think of only and only preliminary examination first. Don't think for mains and interview at a time. Okay, so let us uh, get segregated. First, we are going to discuss about preliminary examination. So, focus on preliminary examination. Uh, you can purchase any manual <clears throat> from market or even on certain websites uh, or apps, you will get this type of book that is manual for UPSC civil services examination. So like that, any one manual uh, you have to purchase. Now, after purchasing that manual, uh, start studying out that manual. Say manual is not detailed. Okay, it is not the solution, but you will get idea about the topics. You will get entry in the topics from that manual. This is first stage. Uh, that manual is having something 1000 or 1500 pages. So if you are going to read out that all pages and able to grasp the data, then it will be all right. Then start second level that is reading of reference books. Here I am not talking about NCRT books. Okay. So start reading about reference books. Say for example in case of history you are preparing for uh, history then I may recommend you that okay you can read a book that is uh, written by R.C. Mujumdar so that is a reference book like that various books you have to refer uh, depending upon the topics uh, you have to refer the books the third thing you have to read NCRT books alright so why NCRT because many times certain uh, confusing data is there. Everywhere you will get this type of confusing data. Uh, say for example, how many ball and socket joints are present in human body. Some books are saying 4 and some books are saying 6. They are considering pelvic girdle and pectoral girdle only. But in some reference you have to consider uh, mandilla, uh, mag uh, maxilla mandible joint also. And then... Uh, Real answer you have to consider from NCRT book. Whatever is given in the NCRT book that you have to consider as a true answer. And therefore it is recommended that after reading all these things you have to go through uh, NCRT books. Okay. So this is about reading. This is for preliminary examination but only reading is not sufficient. It depends on person to person. A person like me, I believe in only reading. Uh, my technique is very very simple you can also follow if you are able to follow it is not necessary that every time a person A is doing this that means it is correct no may be possible person B will have another approach okay so what I am preferring of that I will go I am going to tell so read the book uh, there are different topics so for example if I want, uh, I want to discuss about chemistry I want to discuss about space science I want to discuss about physics or even I want to discuss about geography, particularly season cycle and all that region, uh, reason that we have to use your reasoning power, you have to use your analytical power, understanding, all that. At that time, uh, only reading is not sufficient. But if you want to uh, carry out topics like history, sociology, uh, political science, then reading is also sufficient. Start reading. Without Understanding also, but start reading. This is your first reading. Speed in the reading is essential. Read that uh, whatever the book in front of you. Keep it aside for at least one week. Now don't uh, 
after the completion of this reading don't go for second reading immediately after a week start reading now the second time this is very very essential that when you are going to read second time you will recollect that okay i have read just one week ago or two weeks ago i have uh, read and then you will get automatically data feeding your brain now keep that book aside after second reading aside uh may be possible one week two week three week or even months till that study something else and then that uh, you have to read that book again third time here your data get fixed in your mind perfect data so this is the technique uh, for subjects where uh, understanding is not required to great extent but data feeding is really important you can go by this method now we are going to discuss second topic that uh, how to prepare for mains because many students are having doubt in mind that uh, after completion of your prelim examination and after opening out results uh, time gap between mains examination and uh, result of prelim is very less uh, the answer is that yes it is true but uh, you can consider this way that while preparing for prelim you can start your note making okay so that note making is a powerful tool if you are not believing in reading only then this is the powerful tool and uh, practice for mains this is important what you have to do say for example i am teaching about uh, say raja raja chola a prominent king from chola dynasty so i will give you some information over here uh, you have to take down that then open out reference books and from that you have to gather important point of raja raja chol and then you have to write it down so your notes about raja raja chol the great emperor in south india uh, you will get able to study data everything that is fixed in your mind now like that you can prepare notes for each and everything and then uh, go through upsc mains paper they are asking you question say you have to explain in about 250 words or like that once you have database then you can use it according to your requirement plus point minus point like that you can take out and therefore it is highly essential that understanding of the concept rather than that mugging up the questions uh, some students are uh, saying this when i am biting one line or two line or and all that questions so no need to uh, do that but keep in mind that important things say for example if you are talking about a solar eclipse then at that time what is the position of sun what is the position of moon whether sun is at uh, that means earth is at apogee uh, aphelion position or perihelion position moon is at apogee or perihelion then we can predict about solar eclipse whether it will be a partial solar eclipse or it is hybrid solar eclipse or it is annular solar eclipse or it is total solar eclipse like that various possibilities are there if you are able to understand the concept then you can write it very easily so my advice to you that start making notes and try to get understand the concept that is really essential so uh, for mains your study that is for general studies separate essay writing uh you can start out essay writing uh, you can take out subjects your own subject previous year's paper subject and try to write down essay because ultimately if you are going through the subjects uh science and technology economics political science like that based subjects are there uh, even some essays are there discussed on our youtube channel that is our kar i study circle old uh, essays some three or four essays i have discussed Uh, in old days, so you can check out the uh, them also. Now, for main important thing about optional subject. In old syllabus, optional subjects subjects were important because they were having at that time two optional subjects. But now only one optional subject is there, and that is also for five hundred marks. So wattage is very less for optional subject, and uh, as I have recommended and uh, in previous sessions also. and always i recommend you that uh, if say for example myself my graduation is there in chemistry so i must select chemistry 
for uh, optional subject. Instead of that, if I am going to say, alright, I studied zoology in SYBSC, so I will go for zoology. It is a bit difficult because it requires graduation plus one level knowledge. And if I am saying that, okay, till 12th standard I was having physics, so I can go for physics also. So it will be very, very difficult for me to cop up physics at MSc part one level. And therefore it is recommended that please select the subject, optional subject that is of your graduation. But if you are that unfortunate that whatever your graduation subject is there, that is not in the list of UPSC uh, mains subject, optional subject, then you have to select a subject which will be there closer to your subject. Okay. And you have to study that for graduation plus one level. So this way you can prepare for mains. The important thing I must say that uh, instead of how many hours you are studying out is not that important. But whatever you are going to study that you are able to keep in mind thoroughly that is really important from men's point of view. What about men's? In case of preliminary examination, if you are able to qualify, then you have to appear for men's examination. Preliminary examination is only objective in nature. That means a multiple choice question and you have to select the correct choice. Whereas a uh, men's examination is a written examination. You have to write. That is the most important part of men's examination. Uh, first, two qualifying papers are there. They are of obvious uh, English language and second that is anyone Indian regional language. If you are belonging to seven sisters then you can consider English as second language also. But other than that you have to consider only uh, first in English and second any other Indian regional language. Obviously these two papers are for qualifying marks. So uh, their total, what we are to going to get, you are not considering in that total marks. Henceforth, that means after these two qualifying paper, all papers we have to consider in uh, total. So each paper is of 250 marks. So first paper that is essay writing. Essay is uh, we have to consider as mirror of your personality, your thoughts, your intelligence, everything you can consider there that is in essay writing. Initially, this essay writing was of 300 mark and only one essay was there. But now, uh, certain changes are observed that uh, obviously they given this for 250 marks in new syllabus and uh, many times they are giving you this type of pattern that uh, set of four essay, question one, set of four essay question two and you have to select any one essay from set one and one essay from set two or question one question two so you have to write two essays initially it was only one essay but now they are giving you more detailed choice you have to write about two essays so 125 marks each two essays well you have to write in terms of 1250 words approximately so you can count on one paper, let us imagine that you are able to write 10 words in a line. It is not possible, but suppose you are able to write 10 words in a line. Then a uh, single full scape is having suppose 30 lines. Then your single full scape will give you 300 words. So like that, you have to write down essay that is of uh, actually 2500 words. But now we are dividing it into 1250 and 1250. So like that you have to write down two essays. Then uh, next paper that is of science and technology, then ethics, history, geography, that means general study only. Here, uh, what is the recommendation? That whatever you have studied for preliminary examinations, that is there only for mains, except ethics. Ethics. And uh, another topic is there that is 
internal security of India. So like that minimum uh, minor here and there, but rest of the topics, they are there belonging to preliminary examination only. So no separate study. If however, whatever uh, optional subject you are going to select, that you have to study. Say till here, that means in case of prelim, your knowledge is expected that is up to 10 standard level, 10 plus 2 level knowledge that is uh, useful. But when you are considering your optional subject, then it is usually graduation plus one year's knowledge. That means suppose you are going for MA, then whatever the syllabus expected in MA part first, that is there. If you are going for MSc, then whatever the syllabus for MSc part one, that is considered here, that is in optional subject. So there are many optional subjects. Uh, you can visit upsc.gov.in and you can find out the list of optional subjects because some subjects, they are there for graduation, but they are not here in uh, UPSC's list. So you have to find out the subject which is going very close to your graduation subject. Many times students are taking some drastic decision. A science student will say that I will go for history or geography. Some uh, students, they will select uh, human anthropology and like that subjects. So keep in mind uh, here, whatever subject you are going to select, that is of graduation plus one level. So very deep study is required. Your written answers are expected that part only. So you have to get select format optional subject. Uh, this is about uh, mains. Now here 250 marks each subject is there. So optional subject that is also two papers of optional subject. So 250 plus 250 that is 500 marks. They are there for uh, optional subject. So here we are getting uh, men's examination score. From men's they are going to select for interview or that is called as personality test. But keep in mind here, uh, suppose, uh, suppose vacancy is of 1000 uh, candidate, then they are supposed to select 3000 students for personality test. So we are saying the ratio is of 3 to 1, that is from 3 candidate we have to select 1 candidate. So from 3000 they are going to select 1000 candidate and like that they are going to arrange cutoff. Okay, that marks are called as cutoff marks, they are going to select in this fashion. And then you are supposed to go for personality test. Whether coaching classes are required for UPSC civil services examination. Answer is it depends upon person to person. Because there are many examples, those students, uh, they were in the rank without joining any coaching class. You are aware about the great person Ekal Ove. So same way, if you are considering yourself like Ekal Ove or eligible to study, then obviously you can go without class for UPSC civil services examination. But if you require that okay somebody should tell me, then I will understand. Then you can go for coaching class. When you are going to select coaching class, you have to consider number one, whether that coaching class is in the vicinity of your house, you can go and come from that coaching class very easily without spending much of the time. Second thing, whether that class is going to complete whatever the syllabus, so there is no fixed syllabus, even I am uh, telling you that in our classes also, we are not able to complete the syllabus because syllabus is not there. We are to discuss. Okay. So we are going to discuss hardly 5%. Openly I am telling. Hardly 5%. Because UPSC civil services, we had to uh, consider that what is the role of coaching class? That is to guide you. Okay. We are going, uh, going to take you in the subject. But after, you have to develop that subject your own. Alright. So, maybe possible, suppose I am teaching you space science. 
I will uh, inform what is dark matter, what is black hole, what is dark energy, and like that subjects, concepts, I am going to tell you. But uh, if I am working only on dark matter, then our future will be dark because uh, what is the guarantee that question will be there on dark matter? Okay, and therefore, uh, if there, then you will get hardly two marks if your answer is right. So I can't focus much on the topic. So my role is that I have to take you in the subject and continue. Uh, what you, your role is there that you have to get more and more knowledge about the topics. That's why the class must have library facility. You can sit there in the library peacefully and uh, study out the books. Uh, obviously this reference book must be there in the classes. And then the most important thing that whether that class is going to conduct test mock test, mock prelims, only conduction of test and your score is uh, 200, uh, sorry 100 out of 200 like that data is not there. Analysis is there. That uh, why this is the answer and this is not the answer. So like that if things are there, then you can join that class immediately. Many students are not uh, now not in favor of online classes. But according to me, online is the best option. Uh, this is not that uh, people can make money easily, but uh, actually we can provide much more things in online rather than offline. Say online and offline both are having their own advantages and disadvantages. In offline classes we are able to discuss. In online classes there is communication is only one way communication. So like that things are there. But uh, obviously uh, I will recommend you to search online and go through the feeds because we are there to provide you everything free. So on Savarkar I study circle you will find all lectures required they are at free of cost. So go through them uh, go, go through them and follow even test series are there uh, and what not just uh, visit our channel scroll out that channel find out whatever the things are there and start solving. So the first thing Classes are required, answer is, it depends upon person to person. But if you your mindset is that I want to join offline class, then if you are able to reach to our class, then it is all right. It is at Dadar, Mumbai. For more details uh, on the same YouTube channel, you will find our e-brochure. So go through that e-brochure uh, and uh, in this description of this video, I will put that e-brochure so link for e-brochure so you get idea about this class but it is not recommended always that uh, say for example a person is staying at Pune so why that person should come to Mumbai for study okay so if that person is staying in Pune then there are many classes in Pune so you can join that class at Pune so uh, it is not recommended that go somewhere else and study okay so uh, like that you can go so rather than that online class is a very good option prepare for UPSC civil services examination if you are there in the age limits then and if you are having interest the most important thing is there must be interest so if you are having interest then you can appear for CDS that is combined defense services examination also uh, see these videos in our uh, uh, on this same channel we have videos that is uh, for information of CDS examination. So if your age criteria is there, then you can appear, you can join that uh, CDS examination also. Almost study is same. Whatever you are going to study for UPSC civil services examination, uh, almost that is the study for CDS, that is combined defense services examination, uh, OT, that is officers training academy, part of combined defense services. But uh, if you are going for uh, Air Force Academy or uh, Naval Academy then obviously mathematics is additional subject there. Now uh, this is something we are talking about uh, if you are preparing for UBC civil services examination then what other things you can do. So top level UPSC civil services then you can also at that same level you can prepare that is for CDS combined defense services examination and then you have uh, state level public service commission for example we belong to Maharashtra 
So we have MPSC examination, uh, Maharashtra Public Service Commission examination. Suppose somebody is there in Madhya Pradesh, then they have a MPPSC examination. So like that, uh, examinations are there and you can try various other examinations also. So my idea is that try all examination. Level is different, subject is almost same. The level of examination, the level of question that differs from exam to exam. So my advice is there that uh, try to appear for as many exams as possible and you will get practice. Obviously your aim must get uh, selected in UPSC civil services examination. What is the selection uh, process? What way it works? Approximately 15 lakh candidates trying to get into these civil services. So, almost per year, 10 lakh to 15 lakh students they are there to appear in the examination, prelim examination, that means filter of approximately, suppose we are saying 1000 is number of vacancies, then approximately 10,000 to 11,000 students are selected for mains examination. So for prelim examination, n number of candidate, 10,000 or sorry, 10 lakh to 15 lakh, but from that, your selection is there in 10,000 to 11,000 in that region range you are getting selected and from that they are going to select 3,000 for personality test. Now uh, if you are going statistically then obviously first barrier is a bit difficult that is from 15 lakh to 10,000. Second barrier is quite easy statistically 10,000 to 3,000 so nearly one third. Now this way uh, the selection process that is there 